I've learned the hard way to have a very good balance between being formal and also being flexible and super welcoming and warm. If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again, and thank you for joining me for Vacation Rental Success, episode number 75. Just 25 to go now before the the big 100, and uh, I'm giving you due warning now that uh, the 100th episode is going to be particularly special. It's actually going to be a week. We're planning a whole week of episodes. So, you know, it's 25 weeks away, or it could be shorter. We might start, you know, Mike and I are talking, sort of thinking about at the moment of adding in a second episode uh, during, during the week. Maybe a shorter one, maybe something that is just some tips and recommendations, resources. I'd love to hear from you to, uh, you know, let, let me know if you think that, that that's something you'd like. Maybe a sort of 10 minute, um, just a answer a question or or recommend a resource or uh, talk about just one small issue or one large issue, if you like. Um, so just let me know, heather at cottageblogger.com, if, uh, if, if that's something that would, uh, would interest you. I'd really love to hear from you. Well, this week, I've been looking a lot at social media, looking at the, the way I, we use for, for, our, for our business, in fact, how we use social media to, to get our message out, to engage with people and to create relationships. And we have, you know, in our office, we've actually got one full-time member of staff who, who was primarily taken on as, as a marketing assistant. So she could, she could do all this with our social media. And up until now, she's been pretty much taken up with with reservations. You know, we've been so busy. She's she just spends all her time uh, answering emails, talking to guests on the telephone, and hasn't really been able to fulfil her potential yet. As you know, in in her role as a marketer or in a social media, you know, our social media content maker, if you like. But because we're just about to implement a new property management reservation system, and that's going to take away a lot of the stuff that she was doing in terms of uh, manual reservations. We got discussing social media this week. We began to look at our Facebook um, page, our Pinterest boards. We were we're looking at Google+, and of course, Twitter, which has always been... Um, it, I, I call it my home because I, I just love using Twitter. And we were exploring all sorts of, of different things. And she's going to come up with a, with a plan on how we manage all our social media accounts. So just about the time we started talking about that, um, it, uh, it, it reminded me of somebody I had uh, come across a several months ago and have been meaning to have on the show for quite some time. And this, uh, this lady is a social media expert. She's also a vacation rental owner and, and it's a great, great conversation ranging from everything to do with how she manages her own vacation rental home from a, from a, a long distance to, um, perhaps starting up a podcast, which, as you know, is dear to my heart, and I think I think we should be all be out there creating our own podcasts. So let's move on over to the interview uh, with Lynn Abate Johnson. I am so delighted to have with me today Lynn Abate Johnson, who is a vacation rental owner, and she's going to tell us where her vacation rental is, and uh, that one's going to surprise you. And she's also a whiz at social media. And we all know that we need to get better at using social media to advance our vacation rental businesses. So I've invited Lynn on to talk about that. But first of all, welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me today. And 
I am so happy that uh, we were able to connect. We have had a little bit of uh, a few Skype issues on this call, and um, I'm hoping that this is going to work this time. So welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm really honored that you asked me, Heather, and it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I just want to back up a little bit and uh, and just let everybody know how I found you because this is this is all the just the beauty of the internet and I was watching I was watching a, a creative live course on Instagram with Suby Zimmerman and of course Sue's been on this show uh, a while back, and I wanted to watch the course and uh, and listen to Sue live delivering um, all her wonderful magical stuff about Instagram. And in the audience was this lady who kept asking the best questions. These were the questions that I wanted to know, and I don't know. At some point, Lynn must have said something about being a vacation rental owner because I suddenly went, wow, this is it. I've got to have her on the show. So if you didn't know that, Lynn, that's how I found you. Wow. Yes, it's, that was a great three-day course in San Francisco. And don't you love how the internet brings us closer together? Some people say the opposite, but I believe that it just breaks down barriers even more for those of us who are really interested in being connected. So it's the reason I became a social business specialist. I, I, I just so agree. Um, most of the people, I'm, I'm a bit of a sad soul. I live, like you actually, I live in a pretty much a, a rural area. Um, I used to say I don't get out much, but I, I do meet a ton of people online and, and have had, had great opportunities like you have to, to actually turn that around and meet those people face to face. So, but, it, but it's, you know, the ice is always broken if, if you've mm -hmm. actually got to know them online first. Yes, it's one of my greatest joys, actually, to be able to meet people offline that I've known online for years. And once we meet, it's, you know, when I know when you and I meet, finally, it's going to be like, we're old friends, we're sisters, we're comrades, we, uh, you know, just... We'll be hugging and kissing and just <laughs> greeting each other with a lot of love and respect because we've already built that over time online. Yeah, ab absolutely. I've been to a couple of podcast conferences where, you know, the, all the, all, as you say, all the hugging that goes on. I mean, these people have never <laughs> met each other face to face before, but of course they've, they've developed these relationships. Let's, yeah. uh, let's kick off and, and t I want you to tell me a little bit more about yourself and, okay. and how you, and well, you can tell us all where your property is and how you came to um, to have that um, okay. as, as a vacation rental. I'd be happy to. Well, I grew up uh, in an entrepreneurial family. So from the time I was very small, I was working, um, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this, but my grandfather started a chain of roller skating rinks in the Detroit area in Michigan. And so uh, from the time I was very small, I was, you know, waiting on customers, and everything in my life has been customer-facing. So I grew up in uh, the, Detroit, De the Detroit area and also in Southern California, and now I'm in Northern California most of the time. Um, I just really thrive on building successful businesses. You know, the entrepreneurial bug was planted early. That seed was planted early in my soul, and I'm just hardwired to grow businesses and develop systems to make those businesses run smoothly and then enter <laughs> my vacation rental business. I actually started the vacation rental business with my home in the wine country, in the Northern California wine country. I'm in Sonoma Valley. And once I learned more about the business myself, and I, I was doing everything myself uh, because I'm, you know, want, I wanted control and uh, I wanted to develop my own systems. And once I did that, uh, we had been actually going to New Zealand for years since 2002 when the Lord of the Rings trilogy was being made. And a good friend of mine from Napa actually moved over there to work on the films. He's a visual effects editor. And because of him, we started visiting New Zealand. So January of 2002, fast forward to January of 2008, which was, I think, our fifth visit to New Zealand, and we ended up buying a house in Wellington. So it's a beautiful home. It's high on a hillside. 
some neighbors of ours have gondolas actually going up to the front door. So it's just, you can imagine the views are magnificent. And uh, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath house, so it sleeps six. And I actually run that business from here in California, although we do get over to New Zealand once in a while. But then it's just for fun and to kind of check on things. And um, I was just there in November and December, and we had a, a bunch of work done and got to work with our contractor and meet him. And it's just a, another beautiful place. You know, if I had to live anywhere else besides Northern California and the wine country, Wellington, New Zealand, and the surrounding area would be my choice. So I feel very fortunate. I've uh, I've seen the, uh, the your your listing for the home, and I'll make sure I put the URL of that on the show notes so everybody can go take a look. And it does look gorgeous. The views are just stunning, just as 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 you say. Tell me what you do about um, property management because because that's what people often will will often be concerned about if they're buying a property. Uh, in in another mm-hmm. country, and I'm not sure why they get more concerned about it when it's with when it's in another country than when it's sort of like 200 miles away, and they still have to manage it from afar. Well, what systems have you got in place to make sure that you know your your changeovers are carried out and that any emergencies are handled? Yeah, tell me tell me how you do it. Well, I purposely keep it simple. Um, at the beginning, I I created my own website, of course, and um, you know just kept it really simple. That's the website that you even see today is just uh, the the base website. But then I've also advertised on several websites around the world, and VRBO is one of them. So I get you know a lot of Americans inquiring through VRBO. But also there are several websites in the South Pacific and Australia, the UK even, and New Zealand where I get a lot of inquiries. So... Um, the websites are covered, you know, they take care of themselves, and I am available, you know, pretty much 24-7 to answer the inquiries, and I love doing that. It's Even though I'm not meeting the people in person, I'm going back and forth, you know, by email with people from Singapore and from everywhere that you can imagine around the world, and then when the booking goes through, you know, then I'm having a, a further relationship with them, so... My, the biggest part of the business to me is the relationships between the people. The other stuff, what I call 10%, is the mechanics. So it's 90% people and enthusiasm and relationships and about 10% mechanics. And I have found people there on the ground who have been very dependable, you know, a house cleaner, a locksmith, a plumber, an electrician, or over there we call them sparkies. And... Uh, I have these systems in place for my own ability to ask questions of the guests. You know, just certain things that I've developed over time to make sure that the place is suitable for them. So then if it's a fit, then we go ahead with the booking process. I have a, a very uh, <laughs> a formal rental agreement. And for the Kiwis, it's a little off-putting at some times. And I just say to them proactively, I realize this is a lot more formal than a lot of the Kiwi owners have. However, we rent to people literally from all over the world, and the formality in no way diminishes our warm welcome for you. That way, you know, when people see the rental agreement and they see that we perhaps charge a little bit more of a bond or security deposit than they're used to, they either want to continue or they don't, and that's, that's fine with me. I never get attached to the outcome. Um, because my system is my system, and I learned early on that the more you bend and, you know, to a certain extent you can be flexible, but the more you just give and give and give and give and give and, you know, break your system, the more difficult it is to keep track of it and know what the next step is and know kind of what's been promised so that you can make sure you're delivering. But also it could be a signal or a red flag for people who are going to be a, an issue later on or a problem later on. So I've learned the hard way to have a very good balance between being formal and also being flexible and super welcoming and warm. So that's kind of the, it's an attitude and um, a policy that I have at the same time to keep my systems in place and be very, you know, hold the line as far as the boundaries 
and also be be welcoming and I've had neighbors rent the house for extended you know family who's come in for holidays and it just always seems to work out really well because I think I put extra effort into having that personal relationship with people ongoing so um, and then I have a very <laughs> a very modest Facebook presence so if you go to facebook.com forward slash N Z stay S T A Y. Uh, you'll see the the Facebook page, and I try what I try and do there is just inform people about local things that are going on. I have my finger on the pulse of a lot that's going on, obviously in Wellington, and whenever there are rugby events or cultural events or museums or you know new films being released, obviously because it's the the world of Peter Jackson and The Hobbit and everything. Then I, I can post information about that, but I also, on my Facebook page, I like to post things about other areas where people can travel, because obviously when people come to visit your site or your Facebook page, they are interested in traveling. So I don't limit it to just things around Wellington. I like to actually post recipes there for my guests to pull off of the Facebook page, and so they can prepare a recipe while they're there at the house, you know. So I think about the things that I like, and then that's what I do because I'm first and foremost a vacation rental customer. And I've rented places for years and years in Lake Tahoe because I'm a snowboarder. And so I, I would always be renting houses and condos in Lake Tahoe. And so that's how I got interested in the business. And how I modeled my business after the owners that I rented from. So they were helping me without even knowing it, develop my systems for my business. I, I think you, you've got such a great approach there. And I, in fact, I'm just uh, scrolling through your Facebook page as, as we talk and, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and getting immersed in it. And it's, it's always interesting that we, we do this all the time. We'll go to a Facebook page and sometimes it's just a bounce straight out again. Um, yes. But I'm immediately immersed and you know I'm I'm listening to you but I'm also looking at you know what makes New Zealand unique. I, I see so many Facebook pages that that owners use for their vacation rentals which which are really it's post after post after post which is me 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 me. You're in social media you know this that so many people do have that mentality when posting on these platforms that I want to get out my message about me and my property. Whereas, as yeah. I don't know if you've come across Alan Egan, he's, he's a Brit. He does, he, he has a terrific um, website called Rent More Weeks. And, and his philosophy is, that, you know, people aren't, aren't renting your house. They're coming to the location and, and you've really got this. Um, so, so of course, there will be a link yes. to your Facebook page on the show notes as well. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking about systems, and one of the most important things for me and for, for teaching my clients as well who are growing their businesses is to be accessible and to have everything at your fingertips. And what does that mean today? It means being mobile. So you've got to be social, you've got to be local-oriented, and you've got to be mobile. So it's the solo mo, right? Um, it helps me in terms of being accessible to my prospective customers, but it also helps me in terms of running my business because when I have my business in my hand through my smartphone, it makes all the sense in the world because, you know, there, there are statistics that show the sooner you get back to people that have an inquiry about your property, the more likely you are to actually have that turn into a, a solid booking. And I really take pride in that. In fact, I have guests remark about it all the time. If you look at the testimonials page on my website, some of them have remarked, you know, thank you for getting back to us so soon. Thank you for being able to accommodate us at the last minute. And so it's got to be at your fingertips. It's got to be conversational. Um, You've got to assume the best, you know, that a guest is going to take really good care of your house uh, while being eternally vigilant, as I mentioned before. And yes, the rule about social media is, um, and again, this is what I teach and how I run the accounts that I run for my clients, is 80-20. So 80% about everything else except for you. 20% 
push messages or sales messages or look at how great we are. Um, you know, I can pull testimonials in from my website, but I only do it once in a while on the Facebook page, for example. And, you know, just trying to uh, grow that audience so that it's people who are interested in all types of travel, all types of cultures. You know, I have a little bit about the Maori culture in there. I uh, like many different pages, uh, local theater groups, and the All Blacks rugby team, and and other sports teams, and the Elton John thing is, you know, a, a concert that's coming up that he's going to be doing in Wellington. So I want to let people know about so much more that they might not get otherwise. And I like to help people plan their trips and help with itineraries. However, that's not really included in my rental rates. So while I love to do that, I've got to be smart about how I invest my time. Mm -hmm. And so the best way I can do that is proactively provide tools and materials and information. And on my website, I do have a, a reference and uh, it's called a resource and links page. And on that page, I try and keep it really updated with links to local taxi cab companies that we use and local restaurants that we love. And then when you arrive at my home, I have a binder that has a repeat of everything that's on my website. So it's in print in the welcome binder. And then I can recommend even more restaurants there, depending. I can categorize them. And, you know, so that's on the ground once they arrive. And, and then another part of my system is that I always reach out after they've arrived to make sure that they've located the welcome binder and to make sure that they've been able to get on the internet and that everything is working. And in the case of emergencies, I have a couple of people there on the ground who, you know, there's a phone number available and then they always have access to me when it's the hours that I'm awake. And I let people know, you know, that I'm either traveling or I'm overseas or, you know, kind of where I am so that they know that they can either reach me or someone else in case of emergency. You are what uh, you, you're, you personify an, an article that I read uh, a couple of days ago that was um, on Skift, which is the, um, um, the one of the travel industry's sort of trend uh, websites. And they're talking about major players in the industry, sort of Airbnb and HomeAway, TripAdvisor, mm -hmm. and saying that um, it actually says major players from Airbnb and HomeAway to the Priceline Group and TripAdvisor have tapped, in, uh, tapped into only about one-fifth of the addressable $100 billion vacation rental alternative lodging market. And some of these companies, particularly the online travel agencies with their huge marketing budgets, face what might be considered a surprising obstacle in their way. And that's you. Because it goes on to say that is, namely, those pesky vacation rental owners who often prefer to deal with guests directly and yeah. offline. It's really interesting talking with you on this because there is this army of owners who are standing in the way of of these big companies achieving their mega goals. And I can't see that that will change. I hope that it doesn't change because one of the things that attracted me to VRBO in the first place was what it says, vacation rental by owner. And I always wanted to deal as a consumer with the owner um, I recently had a terrible experience with an agency, and so I would love to work with more agencies to help them become more human mm -hmm. and to help instill some of these qualities that people want and people really crave that human-to-human -human contact um, with any any type of consumer item that they are looking into. And I just... You know, I feel for the people out there who are having to deal and having horror stories, you know, with agencies who are running things by the numbers and automatically. You know, it happens in, in my social media business, too. You know, there are agencies have cropped up a dime a dozen and, and you know, these poor unsuspecting business owners really don't know the difference. And so they're paying, you know, thousands of dollars for really meaningless meaningless posts yes. on social media pages that have nothing to do with their relevant audience or have any warmth or any conversation 
or any engagement. And really, the bottom line is still relationships, just like it always was, just like it always will be. There is nothing new under the sun. And I know it's a billion-dollar business, and I realize there are so many who want to get in and tap into that business. I'm just a, a fierce advocate for those businesses having more of a heart than they do and responding to people when they get the inquiry, when they get an email, when they get a phone call. You know, pick up the damn phone. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes, and- I, I do that in, in our office. Um yeah. all all the time you know i i do run an agency we yeah. ha- we have over 200 properties so we yeah. have we'd probably deal with 100 maybe 150 at the moment inquiries a day and so yeah. often i'll i'll say to to my staff when they they the questions come in we'll just pick up the phone talk to them you know these these are people who have asked a question there are so many people that there are those people who just want to book they they don't want to talk to anybody for sure. But we talk about, you know, you know, listening to them, reading between the lines on an email. What is it they're actually saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I interviewed uh, John DeJulius just, uh, just around about the January time, and he's the author of The Customer Service Revolution. Mm-hmm. And I actually saw, uh, I listened to John do a keynote at the Vacation Rental Managers Association conference in San Diego last last year. And I was just blown away with him. And, and he's he's talking exactly uh, on that same topic that you were just um, just explaining. Mm-hmm. That there's got you know it's a everything is about relationships and engagement, and people will not come back to you if you don't do that. Right, and it really it's such a matter of coaching and training, and that's why I'm saying you know I love to work with businesses that just it, it doesn't take much to tweak the foundation of the business to be so customer centric, you know, so people focused. And it's one of the reasons I named my company People Forward, because when all else fails and you start to spin or you start to get overwhelmed, what is your real focus? And it's like you say, just pick up the phone or, you know, because if you notice that the, the communication is being lost on an email and that can happen sometimes, then yes, that would be appropriate to just pick up the phone and have the conversation. I haven't done that a lot, but I've done it enough to where it does make a difference for those people who needed to hear a voice. Mm-hmm. And so it's not necessary most of the time. Um, and social media also gives us the platforms with which to do even more outreach and even more follow-up and it's kind of a nice add-on. It's it's not the only thing, but it's kind of a nice add-on, like the icing on the cake in terms of all of those things that we do to grow our businesses. Well, that's that's a good segue, really, into looking at other platforms. You mentioned Facebook. What mm-hmm. other platforms uh, do you think would be effective for well, somebody marketing their vacation rental? It's a good question, and I get asked this all the time. Twitter and Facebook, hands down. Um, those are the two largest, you know, with Twitter, you have uh, such a global reach. So if you're looking to rent to people from all over the world, there's so much you can do on Twitter, you know, depending on your location and your target market, I think Instagram could be really fun and fruitful as well as Pinterest for locations and homes that are kind of off the hook, what I call off the hook, picturesque and desirable. Um, Pinterest might be a good place for some of that content to live. And in the world of marketing and sales, you know, which is kind of where I've been raised, there's a quote by Tom Peters, author of In Search of Excellence. And he said, you are either distinct or you're extinct. So you're either distinct or you are extinct. So if you want to have an edge on your competitors, I think that People must do the things that uh, they think they cannot or they refuse to do, like learning something new. Those who are doing it properly and effectively will have a distinct edge and they'll gain more traffic, you know, over time by building those relationships and repeating that over and over again. Because one of the things that I think is missing in most businesses anyway, just bottom line, is the returning and referring customer. 
So this is something that I'm really vigilant about with my clients is to make sure that you're leaving the doors open for people to return and also to refer. In fact, I had a story of, I was mortified, but um, I had guests that had to leave because something happened with one of the utilities or I don't know if it was like a leak or something. This was a couple of years ago. And the last night of their stay, they had to leave. Do you know that those guests, and of course I refunded their money and blah, 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 but they returned the following year because of the way that we left the door open and that, of course, they were so generous and, and kind. And, you know, it was kind of that relationship that we had established over time, and they wouldn't think of going anywhere else. So they realized it was a, a blip and kind of an unforeseen circumstance that was unusual, and they didn't hold it against us. So when you can have guests who will return again and again and refer their friends and family to you, I think you know that's one of the, the largest untapped, speaking of untapped markets, uh, that we can really go after. And it's important to, to have that in your mind at all times, to know if if they're going to refer, and to make it easy, I always say, and I wrote a blog post about this, um, make it easy for people to do business with you. So be that accessible. Be on the social media channels where you've researched and discovered your market is hanging out. Be there so that they can, with a click of, a, with a click of their mouse, they can tag a friend and send your link to their friends. There was one of the things I, I learned about... Um you know, Instagram is, you know, people are going to arrive at a property and they're going to take the photographs and, and, and then immediately send them out if there's something that's, that, that really attracts their attention and, and is mm-hmm. special. So make something really, really special. So when they walk in the door, there's something that they, that's unexpected, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the next thing they're going to do is take a photograph and refer you out to everybody. Oh. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, but I realize that not every business owner has the, the bandwidth or the capacity to, to do it all, to think of it all. And, you know, uh, that's why teams exist, right? That's why we hire people to, to come in and help us with those things that we would rather not do or we would rather not learn and would just focus on the things that we do well. So... Yeah, it makes a difference to have those things in the big picture, and that's why the business plan is important, because those are all parts of a strong, successful, cohesive business that's going to last for as long as you want it to last. And the reason it's going to last is because people are going to talk about you. The thing I always say about social media is your example that you just used on Instagram. You know, people are going to talk about your business, so you might as well be in control of the conversation. I love that. <laughs> yes, yeah. because, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, if you do something great, they're going to share it. And if you do something that's not great, they're going to share it. Exactly. So, you know, the customer is now driving the business, not the business owner. And so it's important to get in on that conversation, help direct the conversation, address the things that are going on that you could do better, always being open to that because, you know, we all have skills and talents. We just sometimes need a boost in some of those areas, again, where we, we don't shine or it's not in our wheelhouse to do. And I think the most successful business owners get that. And they, somebody said to hire your weaknesses. I don't really like the word weaknesses. I would rather say play to your strengths mm-hmm. and focus on Focus on your strengths and let other people help you with the rest. Yeah, well, it, uh, clearly what you're doing is, is massively contributing to your success. Thank you. I uh, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is a lot of fun and it's a viable business. And we uh, are just, my husband and I, we, we love to go there and stay in the house and spruce things up. And he's very handy, so... We always have a list a mile long for when we go because we give it that TLC, you know, and it's it's really nice to have people as well as I have people on the ground who also treat the house with the type of detail that I would. So it's it's kind of a nice place. And who wouldn't love New Zealand? I mean, (laughs) 
Everybody wants to go there. I've had so many people say it's on my bucket list, and it was on my bucket list for years. And um, I just love tapping into all of the kitschy Kiwi things and the people that are there. You know, we've got the Flight of the Concords and, like, what are Brett and Jemaine doing now? And how, how are people furnishing their homes? And what kind, what's real estate doing in the area? I actually like to promote other businesses in the area as well and under other industries. So those are some other sources of content that I like to use to expand the conversations and the interests of people, you know, who are coming around. Well, you delivered so much um, in this conversation, Lynn, I, you know, I'm just looking back over my notes and, and I've got all sorts of quotes here. And, and I think <laughs> I'm probably re- very quote heavy. I want to, I want to highlight all of them. So yeah, there'd be, be a lot of show notes here. Moving on a little bit, um, j- just to, you know, something I know that you've done recently, uh, was, and we've talked about it before we started, started, um, the, the recording today that, uh, you recently attended a podcasting event in San Diego and and I've been promoting the idea of vacation rental owners setting up their own podcast for quite a while because uh, podcasting in travel uh, in the travel and tourism area is it's not that big there's there's so many of those niches niches out there that are um heavily heavily populated with podcasts but travel is is really not one of them so what were your takeaways from that event in San Diego? And do you think that vacation rental owners could benefit from it? Absolutely. I, uh, first of all, it was an amazing, I've said earlier, you know, that particular event was one of the most well orchestrated events that I've ever been to. And I've, uh, attended and actually put on plenty of events over the years. Um, one of my key takeaways from that event in San Diego was that, it does take some forethought and some planning to approach it as part of a holistic business and marketing plan. Um, and, you know, I'm a stickler for follow through and doing, you know, doing things that are fun. And um, as I mentioned earlier, having content that really is interesting for people to latch on to. So, yeah, I, I can totally see doing something that is unique for the area. It's unique for the travelers who are making stops. Like, for example, for my podcast, what I would do if I had one, which I have been considering it, it's, which is the reason I went to learn more about it in the first place, was, um, and I'm glad that you said this about the travel industry, too, because I didn't realize that it was still so untapped. And I know the value of having that as a customer myself. So I would love to have more and more of that. But I would even offer things that, um, you know, all my creative ideas get going. But, you know, when you go to New Zealand, for example, you're flying from, for me, San Francisco to sometimes Sydney, Australia. So you're connecting. Then you could end up in Auckland and then going to Wellington, which is where I go to go home. Um, So I would actually focus on that that path that I'm taking and what is there to do in Sydney and who is there to see in Sydney and who are some of the local celebrities, um, what are the, the local events that are going on. If you're going at this time of year, this is always a festival that you're going to catch in November of every year, for example, and things like that. I, wouldn't that be fun if you were traveling a certain – and you could – you could actually really niche down even more and label these podcasts for those areas of interest that people could really tune into and grab onto for anywhere in the world that they want to go. I, I think so. And I, th- I think it's, it's such a, a great idea. And, and I'd love to see, more, I really would love to see more people doing this. And I know that some people I've spoken to have said, well, you know, my vacation rental's not, you know, what do I talk about? for for a whole 30 minutes or 40 minutes and I said well you know it, it's like anything in social media you're not talking about you you're talking about the location and yes. and them and what people can experience and it was just like anything you know do a do a restaurant review um mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. out and and interview um a the owner of a local craft store you know if you're if you're in um Sue Zimmerman's part of the world go to her store <laughs> yes 
<laughs> you know, it's a great way for us all to be recommending each other's businesses and local businesses that we want to support. And um, I remember the first year I went to New Zealand, I was doing quite a bit of jewelry making. I was, um, I had just started to learn how to, to string beads and um, precious gems like amethyst and um, aquamarine and things. And then I ended up gathering up the Pawa shell, which is kind of like a California abalone. And I brought pieces of the Pawa shell back with me and then drilled holes and then strung those up as big pendants. And... I remember when I was in Wellington, I was looking for a bead shop so that I could pick up some unique beads. So, you know, everyone has hobbies and interests, and that's the kind of thing that you never really would get unless you heard it from an insider or somebody who had already done that research. It makes it so much more easy for people to access those things and do business with you. They're always going to think of you. If, whether you're doing a podcast or any other type of um, promotional piece, they're going to think of you for that specific area, those specific types of businesses, and that's what that's what we want, right? We want people to be thinking of us, top of mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Lynn. You've been an absolute star. I've just just so much um, enthusiasm I'm getting from you for the for the whole um, you know social media area about but it's but it's more than that it's about relationships and and engaging with people and and of course just to hearing about your your vacation rental i've never been to new zealand i think that's uh, it's got to get on my bucket list fairly <laughs> soon and now i know where i'm going to stay yes yes you're welcome anytime and um i i do have a a business book recommendation it's kind of my business bible if you would like to know about it. I would love um, to. It's called the E Myth Revisited. So the capital E dash myth, like mythical, revisited. And this is a book that's over 30 years old. It's written by Michael Gerber, G E R B E R. And it just really helps business owners know whether you're a larger agency or a smaller one or a little mom and pop, it doesn't matter. The principles are the same, and it's a great book, you know, if people are looking for a resource to um, start out or if they're struggling in the business and they're, they're off in too many directions, how to refocus. And it's really, oh, it's an amazing, amazing book. I wish I were getting a commission because I've recommended <laughs> it to everybody. <laughs> <coughs> it's, been a, it's been a while since I read that book, but I still remember pies yes the pie shop <laughs> the pie shop yes no that yeah you're absolutely right it's it's one of it's one of the classics you know for for me um it goes alongside think and grow rich by napoleon yes. hill which is also another another favorite but uh, thank you very much for for that one that will go in the show notes too so we're just about coming to the uh, the end of our time uh, and and it's it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to talk with you, um, I had I had talked to you just before we started and said, would you be going to the podcast movement conference in Dallas? And you said no, you weren't because you were going somewhere else. So, do you want to just yes. share that before we leave? <laughs> well, I don't tell everyone this, but <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to share it. <laughs> no, I I love it. It's I go to Burning Man every year, which is a giant art festival in the Nevada desert at the uh, middle to end of August going through Labor Day weekend. And I this will be my 10th year in a row. And I was joking earlier that when I first started going, some of my friends who didn't really know me very well, but they were going, they, they didn't think I would survive, let alone get so hooked on it that, you know, I obsess about it year round. And, um, so, yeah, we we bought an RV in 2006, just a, a beat-up old RV that we didn't care about. And we've gone to Burning Man ever since, since 2006. And it's an amazing experience. And um, I've gone for two weeks. So it's, it's interesting because it's only a week long. But we go in early and we stay late. We're, you know, part of a, a camp that builds, you know, we construct a bar and lounge and, 
it's a uh, very to me it it really appeals to the that bohemian in me that gypsy in me who loves to travel but also loves people so much that i study people i've always since i was a child my parents told me that i would sit and just be silent and watch people and i still love to do that I, that's why i love airports any crowded place <laughs> I, I i will sit there and watch people and I love to know what makes people tick. And then I love to know what makes businesses and organizations tick. And I love to be of service. So now I'm, you know, of course, older and maybe a little bit wiser. And so I can be of service in those areas where I've observed what works and what doesn't. And Burning Man is no exception. I've, I've been fascinated by the fact that they run their entire event with about 80% volunteers. And these are some of the most committed, crazy, insane volunteers you will ever meet because they, they give their blood, literally sweat, tears. You know, it's not an easy environment to be in. In fact, bugs can't even live out there. It's such a harsh environment. But uh, it's fascinating to me. And it's kind of one of those one-world experiences. And, you know, not to get too airy-fairy, but I always call it my pilgrimage. You know, every year it just... It's real. It's kind of like going out to the ocean for me. It's a very centering experience. So in one hand, I'm going out to the Pacific Ocean to get recharged. And on the other hand, I'm headed toward the Nevada desert. Go figure. <laughs> well, you wrote a great blog post about it. And that's where I sort of, um, I, I, I mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't say heard about it for the first time, but, uh, yeah. but uh, read a bit more into it and got quite intrigued. So, uh, so mm -hmm. really, really interesting. So if anybody wants to know more about you, where can they, um, where can they find you? I would have people go to my website first and foremost because that's the place where everything else lives. All of the other connections live there. And that is peoplefw, so it's short for forward, peoplefw.com. Excellent. And, uh, and that's, uh, as you say, that's where, where, where you'll find, where I'm looking at it now, you'll find all your connections on Facebook, Twitter, yes. Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn. Yes, um, all of my links are there, and the vacation rental page is there as well. Um, and my contact information is there on a page. So if people want to contact me for any reason, they're welcome to do that there too. And we have a lot of listeners who who run small agencies. So you know, I, I would uh, I would certainly suggest mm -hmm. that if you're running a small agency out there and and you want to um, further your interest in social media and relationships and engagement, that you get in touch with Lynn. Lynn, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Same here. This has been fun. <laughs> and we will, <laughs> we will meet in person one day. We will. I'm counting on it. Okay. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, Heather. Thank you again. Oh, that was terrific. You know, the, the more I do this, the more I absolutely love talking to people, not just about vacation rentals, but, you know, about social media, about different resources, about everything in general, really. And I, you know, I, I know it sometimes means that maybe, maybe the conversation, no, it never does. I know it never rambles on, but sometimes it, you know, it goes off on different tangents and uh, I particularly enjoy that. And I'm, I'm, you know, really hope you do too. I just realized that I hadn't mentioned the weather this week. And for those of you um, vacation rental success aficionados who like to hear what the weather is like here in Ontario, because I'm totally obsessed with it. It's gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. It now reminds me of why we immigrated here in the first place. I can't believe that only four weeks ago, we had the heating full on. We had, we were still shoveling snow out of the driveway and there was ice on all the lakes and it was just like winter would never be over. And here we are today. The temperature is mm, hovering around 80 odd, um, maybe 75, maybe 75. It just feels warm because I'm, I'm just not used to it. And the leaves are appearing on the trees and the grass has gone green. And it doesn't, it, it, that's something else that just blows me away. You know, you, we're, we're under 
feet of snow and ice for four or five months. And then within two weeks of the last snow going, everything comes to life again. It's, it's just perfect. I love spring. And so it's, it's not just the weather, it's just the changing seasons. But we seem here to go almost straight from winter into summer. There's just, you know, the spring is just leaves coming out. Um, but we know the hummingbirds will be along very shortly. And I'm going to take some pictures of the hummingbirds this year and get them posted. And uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, seeing, seeing as Lynn and I were talking about Instagram and Subi Zimmerman, I'm going to post my first pictures of hummingbirds on Instagram. So if you've got an Instagram account, let me know. Let's uh, let me follow you and uh, and you can see those. Well, thank you again for tuning in, for listening. I absolutely love having your company because as I've said before, I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't imagining you listening to it because otherwise, whatever is the point. So thank you once again for being with me. Um, as ever, gr- we're going to have some great show notes. Lynn has some fantastic quotes in this interview and, and I've, um, I've transcribed them all. So, so go over there. And I'm also going to be putting some of those quotes out on Twitter because they are, they're really great. And they, they sort of, they, they motivate me and excite me and want me to, to get going and do better things in my business. So I, I hope they've motivated and excited you too. So head on over to the show notes and you can check those out as well. So once again, thank you so much for listening and I'll look forward to being with you again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.